Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. Get right up in that camera. Huh? We do the beer stuff here. Pry Brewing. We've done a bunch of their beers before. Pariah sends a bunch of their beers my, our way, my way, a couple of our ways. And this is their in intermittent... Yeah, I butchered that, but we'll get past it. Availability. Uh, yeah, this is a hazy IPA coming at 7.7%. And I'm excited to dive into this sucker. How long has it been since I broke out that, that bulbous round one, man? It's like, why don't I use these anymore? That's all I used to use. Now we're using them, so there you go. Um, like I said, this comes courtesy of Pariah. Let's do a little bit of story time in the back. We'll read through it as best we can. It says here, what you're holding is a Pariah IPA loaded with gills, loaded with gills with precious galaxy citrate and Amarillo hops. This beer began its life as a small draft only release back in 2018. It was the first time we can get our hands on Galaxy. We are thankful to now have a steady supply of this reminds us to appreciate the amazing raw materials we get to work with on a daily basis. The result is an elevated mash up of our dank drink malt bill and hopping schedule adjacent to tasty taste. Um, in the glass, it pours a rich orange hue with notes of tangerine, mango, underripe pineapple, and whispers of dankness. Enjoy. Enjoy an IPA glass. This is my IPA glass. No practice is sacred. Hmm. Baltimore, Maryland. They used to have San Diego in there. They moved to Baltimore. Let's see what's what. Yeah. Excited. We'll get a date after he gives us a pour. Take a peek at the bottom. Label-wise, this is, you know, not one of the more creative labels of the dumb. Let's put it that way. I like it because it reminds me of a Yankee jersey, the pinstripes and everything. And this was canned. Carry the one, multiply five by whatever, 11, 12 days old. Um, so, yeah, not the most bestest, but you always get the Pry logo, which is basically purple rain lettering from Prince. So, yeah, we win. Um, that is dark. Dark in an oxidation kind of dark kind of way. I don't know if the, the best way to get this on camera, you're probably not going to be able to see it, because right there it probably looks like a rich old hazy. Once I bring it up there, you're like, okay, I'm not getting any light on it. But it has this kind of muddled kind of like I might have seen a bit of oxygen thing going on. Could be the case. Could be just a rich, dense, turbid monster. Piggy finger. Um, just kind of cream colored, off white colored head to it. It's good nose. It has this kind of... I don't want to talk myself into, okay, this thing's oxidized. But it does have this kind of, like, I was a much bigger nose at one point kind of vibe going on. Because you are getting almost... It, it's like a stone fruit citrus thing. Um, you know, that almost like you're like, oh man, this could be bursting at the seams. But something is kind of holding it back. There's a limiter to it. And oxidation can kind of do that from time to time. So while it does have a rich nose to it, a vibrant, relatively vibrant, I should say, kind of uh, big hop saturated stone fruit citrus thing going on. There's not a perception of bitterness to it. There's actually not this perception of sweetness either. It's just this kind of like tempered fruitness, fruitiness that comes from either like a low ABV beer, which this isn't, or something that has a little bit of oxidation going on. So again, I could my eyes could be leading my nose on this one, but we're gonna find out when we dive into the taste. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, I think that's the case. It's not like some big, huge swath of teabaggy cardboardness you're drinking, but you get all the bits and pieces of what should be a really sultry, rich double IPA. You know, 7.7, that's double IPA for me. Mouth feels electric. And, and uh, it's not like electric, like zapping you. And then it's super soft and rich and turbid. That's one of the things that oxidation typically kind of kills. But it's a little bit further down the line. More often than not for me when it comes to the time that something has been percolating in there with that negative oxygen. So the mouthfeel still is really nice here. And you do get that rich 
not yeah it's a pineapple but it's more like now because the lack of sweetness it's definitely more a grapefruit pineapple gra grapefruit first kind of pithiness with this nice kind of rich citrus a little bit of orange it's always going to be there and that kind of pineapple thing but there lacks this kind of just richness and again i keep going back to that word this kind of vibrance to it same thing on the stone fruit side of things you're getting these peachiness you're getting this nice nectarininess but again it's lacking that sweetness it's almost like an over ripened under sweetness which kind of doesn't make sense but it has a softness to it but it just lacks that sweetness that you go with that ripeness but it has that softness that gets you get with ripeness hopefully that makes sense to all y'all out there this bitterness it is probably just a skosh for most people not for me too bitter for where this beer sits but if that sweetness is there if, if that what i'm perceiving as it as this beer starting to get a little bit wonky on an oxidative thing tempers that sweetness a bit i think it was a perfect amount of bitterness um if if that if it was where i think this beer would was or could be a lot of guessing here a lot of assumption here but i think i'm, I'm pretty right on this we have a a canned on date of i already said it what 12 days it hasn't been in here that long um so, is this the intention of the beer? You kind of want to say yes because, you know, it's not, it hasn't spent that much time in the can. But negative oxygen is negative oxygen. That ha can happen and does happen before the beer gets in uh, the beer gets in the can and can be accelerated. You know, a lot of times, you know, keeping that's the key to a lot of these hazy IPAs is keeping that negative oxygen at bay through the whole brewing process and that's what makes the or separates the greats from um everybody else and while prior typically is on point with that i don't really remember having a ton of these kind of issues with their beers um it can happen to anybody and it's one of those things where it's not like okay they had negative oxygen in a can okay that's really going to make the beer go sideways it could be just a little bit in this process a little bit of this process and a little bit of that process and the multiplication okay in these little places you have this thing going on blah 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 the beer just doesn't come off as rich and vibrant as I think it was at inception, you know? So let's walk back the guess, guessing game machine and talk about the actual beer. Mouth feels fantastic. Soft, sultry, silky, kind of like a, like my New England style IPAs to be. There's a bitterness here. It's not... I don't think it's big, but it's a little bit bigger than you come to expect from a New England style hazy IPA. You're dealing with, did they say Amarillo in here? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Galaxy isn't, you know, Galaxy Citrus is not like, you know, lean heavily into bittering on those Amarillo, yes. But if you take this beer where I think it wanted to be or it was, which is a bit sweeter, a bit more vibrant from both that stone fruit and citrus standpoint having that citrus and galaxy kind of really sing be bold that bitterness is perceived much much different and that's where it really kind of kind of while well, still tasty i'm gonna drink this whole beer it's like i'm, I'm talking about it like it's the worst thing ever um it's it, it, it's out of tune because of what i assume is that oxidation now if you just kind of say okay it's not it's fine the color's supposed to be that way this is the way the beer is supposed to be it's just you know undersweetened honestly for me for doing a style hazy ipa you bring this vibrance of that fruit vibrance up a little bit which i think in tune you bring a little bit more sweetness to it which kind of props up that fruitiness and makes it a little bit more ripe makes it a little bit more vibrant it's singing a completely different tune um and that's where it kind of lands for me so it's still tasty fun beer mouthfeel wise alone it's fun af um but there's just something something there and my guess is that oxidation in there so there you go pariah i mean the nose on this is fantastic um it was quite fun um you know and uh the uh, mouthfeel was really tasty i mean nose is okay i was thinking of something different anyway mind wanders um and uh yeah fun beer i'm glad i got to send it off so if this is you know if this gets seen by the old pariah folks which i know they watch um yeah let me know Am I kind of on to something? Is it a singular can issue? That could certainly be the case. There could be a bad seal on the sucker. Well, I doubt it because the carbonation is quite nice. And have y'all 
had prior stuff? Have you had them on the West Coast? Have you had them on the East Coast? Have you had this beer? Have you had this beer? Well, I think this is the first time they're making it, but have you had this batch? If it is the first time, have you had it? Please, down there, talk to me about it. What do you think? Am I right? Wrong, somewhere between? That's what I want to know. Let's have the conversation. So there you go. Reviewing the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Yeah. Hopefully you're enjoying the hazy right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.